Alexa, turn on boba. That was weird. What happens if you're an older generation, say a parent, and a younger generation, say their kid? You have different interests, and those interests are actually diverging instead of converging. Suddenly they're turning into their own people, and this isn't allowed. When did I allow them to get so freaking big? I've talked about communication bridges in a lot of videos, and I haven't actually made a video to explain. I can use what they're interested in as a communication bridge. For me, I ask them why they like the Legos they like, or why they like playing Mario Kart, because they absolutely love Mario Kart. And they like Mario Kart for a different reason than I like Mario Kart. I like it because it's a race and it's Mario. They like it because they can do crazy, silly stuff with the cars and they don't get hurt and nothing bad happens because when you break a Lego, you have to rebuild it. When you break a car in Mario Kart, they don't have to rebuild it. And they're telling me these things because I'm sitting there and asking. And that's the first point is ask why they enjoy what they enjoy. And I think that's a rather simple one, but one that we often forget because being able to show that interest is the very first thing that we need to do is say, hey, you're interested in this and I don't necessarily know why. Can you tell me? Can you, can you tell me what the most incredible thing is about this that you enjoy the absolute most? A little kid who's been playing video games for a couple of weeks will just rattle off a ton of stuff. And an older teenager who we might be having a little bit of difficulty creating that communication bridge might take a little bit more coaxing. It might take a, a few more shots or just silence. Letting there just be that silence. It's not awkward. It's just paying attention to what they're doing. Watch what they're doing. And that's point number two. They're playing a video game. It's not the same as a book. It's not the same as movies or TV. It's an active experience. So when they're going through and doing a particular action, ask them, hey, was that hard? That seems a little bit stressful. Are you practicing to get past the next boss? If you ask it at the inappropriate time, they might scoff. But if you ask an intelligent question about the game instead of a hey, what are you doing? It's going to open up that avenue because they're seeing that you're giving interest to what they're doing. Now, I know that everybody's extremely busy and getting everybody around the dinner table doesn't always happen for a lot of families, but being able to set aside a night for family movie night or family game night is, in my opinion, pretty critical because it creates that shared experience and that bonding time where we can go through and talk to each other and describe why we like what's going on. Learn very quickly that my young kids have decided that they don't like pizza anymore. Family movie night used to be movies and pizza for us and now it's morphing into Mario Kart and Chinese food. And that's because we're discovering that our kids like something different, so we're changing what the night does. But we're still together as a family and creating that shared experience where we do things together. I think it's pretty cool because they're telling us what they like. Now, we have the added benefit of we're doing this when they're younger, so that it's a tradition in moving forward. This means that we're creating an experience where as a family, it's a positive experience of being able to communicate back and forth, creating these bridges. If they're not there with slightly older kids or teenagers, it might take a little bit more coaxing. Again, there might be some mistrust or it might be a, why are we doing this now instead of when we were younger? For those that have the opportunity and can take the time to do this with younger kids and establish a routine, hey, this is something that my parents do with me and they show interest in what I want to do. Now, if your kids don't want to do family game night anymore and they want to do family book night or they want to do something where you go out for a drive, try it because that's the communication bridge. Listening to their interest, taking it wholeheartedly and figuring out if that is actually something they want to do. Let them try something new and different, experiment, if it fails, it fails, and you can go back to something that's a proven success later. I recommend using video games as one of those communication bridges. We learn more about our family, we learn more about ourselves, and we learn more about just people in general. Now, video games can provide that communication bridge or they could be put up as a barrier, which provides that conflict and can make it harder to communicate with people. So I suggest watching this video next, which is how to avoid pitfalls when it comes to video games. This is Wes from Reader Gaming. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit like and subscribe and uh, watch that next video. Do good, play hard, game one, and I'll see you next time.